Hey everybody, welcome to One Flight Down Basement Beer Tastings. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do something in honor of uh, Cinco de Mayo coming up uh, in about a week. Uh, so you're thinking, oh, you're going to be doing Mexican beers. Uh, no, I'm actually going to save those for May 5th. We're going to do uh, an episode where I'm comparing some of the more popular um, Mexican beers that are out there. Do a little... Uh, side-by-side -side comparison between them. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to look at a couple of Mexican-inspired uh, beers that I found from a couple of our local breweries from right here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. First up is a beer from the Handsome Lad Brewing Company. I actually, actually did an episode on their beers not that long ago, but a month or so ago. Uh, they only had two beers available at that point, but they now have a third. It is called the world-famous Palomino Club Cerveza with a hint of lime. Uh, so we're getting a little off topic on Mexico here for a second, but uh, world-famous Palomino Club. Uh, it is a... Uh, a bar in Winnipeg that, uh, I mean, how, how can it be, how can a bar from Winnipeg actually be world famous? I, I'm pretty sure the official name of the place is world famous Palomino Club. I think that's the only way that works. Uh, it's a bar that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's in a different location now and I think it attracts a younger clientele, but uh, for the longest time it was kind of known as like an older person's pickup joint and yeah, it's kind of notorious for uh, a lot of eh, not the best reasons. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure the new Palomino is just fine. But anyway, so what does this Winnipeg bar have to do with uh, Mexico? I have no idea. Uh, but the beer they chose to name that after was a cerveza with a hint of lime, and you don't get more Mexican than that, right? A cerveza with a hint of lime. So I don't even need to cut up some lime to add to this. We're just going to go as is. <laughs> Not much there on the nose and the can, but there often isn't until I pour it out, right? Oh, and if you're wondering what the shirt I'm wearing, uh, Improv Arta was a little improv show I did in Mexico in 2018. Uh, my troupe, Improvision, and another troupe called The Horrible Friends. We uh, combined forces and did a bunch of shows in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, I didn't make the second trip uh, the following year, or is it later the same year? Uh, it was later the same year. But anyway, I didn't make the second trip. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's happened a couple times. I would totally do that again one day. But uh, anyway... Back to the beer. Um, yeah, pretty non-existent nose on this one. Um, oh, there we go. A little bit of lime. A little bit of lime jumping out at me there. All right. Uh, let's give this a try. Uh, the lime isn't as strong on this as I was expecting. Um, you think back about, I'm uh, going back over a decade ago, um, there was a lime beer craze, uh, I don't know, I think like around 2010, around that time period, every brewery seemed to be putting out a, a beer of artificial lime flavor in it. And they were more often than not, uh, not very good. <laughs> um, and I mean, I, I'm someone who enjoys, uh, especially on like a hot summer day, right? Like a, like a Corona or a Pacifico or something like that with a, with a, a wedge of lime in there. But I always found that these, um, uh, kind of mass produced, um, lime beers, uh, they were just so overpowering in the lime taste that it, it did not replicate having just a little bit of a lime, uh, in your beer. This, this is a little closer, I think. Um, yeah, it's, uh, the lime isn't super strong on it. And it's pretty thin on the mouthfeel, which is kind of what you would expect from a cerveza. Um, I'm getting a little more of an aftertaste than I was expecting. 
Um, what I usually find with uh, uh, cerveza with lime is it's just so refreshing and goes down so easy. And I, I don't really usually think of a strong aftertaste being a part of it, but I, I'm definitely getting that here. Yeah, nothing great. Um, I mean, it's it's drinkable. <laughs> I'll gladly finish it. Uh, but yeah, it's not, uh, it's nothing fantastic. Uh, I, I would go, I mean, if I wanted a beer with a hint of lime with it, I'd, I'd do a Pacifico with a wedge of lime. So yeah, not, nothing great, but, uh, but you know, not, not terrible. The other beers I had from, uh, Handsome Lad, uh, that I, I featured a few weeks ago, uh, I quite liked. Um, so yeah, it's not a knock against them um they do some fine beers this this one's just not really doing it for me uh i mean maybe it's just because i'm associating it with the palomino club that, that might have something to do with it <laughs> all right moving on our next beer is from the good neighbor brewing company and uh they've been featured on the show a couple times if you go back and look my uh, christmas episode they did a great beer at Christmas time. It was uh, like a Christmas fruitcake beer, which sounds bizarre, but it was really, really good. Yeah, let's give this one a try. Uh, it is an Especial Amber Lager. So it's going to be a, a darker style beer than, I think, than you normally sort of expect uh, a Mexican style beer to be. I think we all kind of associate the uh, rather light-colored cerveza with with Mexican beer, but um, this is an amber. And uh, I have had darker Mexican beers uh, in the past, but yeah, it's not what comes to mind when you think of a Mexican beer. Um, but this is a quite a, a deep red, almost a brown. Uh, get it under the light a bit here. Yeah, you can see it is... Uh, a deep, deep red. Um, and I have had this before. I had it quite a while back. I think I liked it. I don't really remember much about it. But I do, uh, I generally like um, the stuff that Good Neighbor puts out. And um, yeah, they're fairly new. They, they were established in 2021. Uh, they just opened a tap room in Winnipeg uh, like weeks ago. It's, it's, it's quite new. I haven't been there yet. Um, but prior to that, uh, they'd been brewing out of the, um, uh, I think it was Oxus Brewing. Yeah, they were brewing out of Oxus Brewing. And, uh, in the summertime, uh, they had like this, this beautiful, uh, like a trailer set up at this, uh, outdoor venue we have in town called the Beer Can. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was super, super nice. Um, yeah, a really cool place. I like their stuff generally. And this beer is 5.4% alcohol. Um, and if I remember correctly, a lot a lot of uh, Good Neighbor stuff tends to come in under 5%. So this is a little bit stronger for one of their beers. Uh, but let's give this a try. Uh, on the nose first, of course. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a, like a sweet breadiness on the nose maybe, but, but you know. Not, not a lot, really. Uh, let's go in for a taste. So it's quite sweet. Um, caramel kind of a sweetness. Um, a little bit of a bitter finish to it. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Um, let's see here. What does it say? Uh, Mexican style amber lager brewed with galena hops and a combination of caramel and roasted malts. Full flavored with a hint of creamy caramel and smooth mellow finish. Yeah, I definitely get the, the caramel. Um, I don't know if I'd really say the finish is smooth. I don't know if that's how I would categorize that, but. You know, that, um, that's actually not bad at all. Um, it is a little smoother uh, than it was on that first sip.
Yeah, that's not bad. It's a slower sipper, I think. Um, but it's nice. Uh, yeah, definitely getting a little bit of a hop bitterness at the end uh, still. But it's nice. It's it's quite nice. Uh, uh, as I said, my uh, next episode next week, um, Cinco de Mayo, I will be looking at four different uh, Mexican beers. Uh, go and find you know, your... Whatever I can find at my local uh, liquor store, uh, it'll be probably like your, your most popular brands of uh, Mexican cervezas, and I'll uh, do them in a blind taste test and uh, see which one is, uh, is the best so you can celebrate your Cinco de Mayo properly. <laughs> of course, we want to do that. Maybe we should just jump in and have some of this instead. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Uh, thanks for dropping by. We'll see you all again soon. Cheers. Go home.